Hi, you guys. So today's video will be on some questions that you have asked me, and I'm now going to respond to your questions. I didn't want to prolong this video any longer, so I'm just going to film it on my iPad versus my camera, um, just because I asked you these questions at the beginning of the week, and the week is getting away from us very rapidly. And um, I just want to get this video up for you guys, so I'm just going to answer these questions for you guys. So, one young lady asked me to tell the naked truth, and she basically wants to know um, would I do the weight loss surgery over again? What are the pros and the cons? And what have I experienced so far? Also, how much money will she be spending on vitamins, food, shakes, groceries, etc.? Um, so let's just jump right into that one first. Okay, so first things first. Would I have the weight loss surgery again? Yes, I would. The reason why I say I would is because I feel great. Um, my highest weight was 365 pounds. The start of the program, I was 356 pounds. When I had surgery, I was 343 pounds. And, at, and as of today, I am officially 295 pounds. Woohoo! So yes, I will have the surgery again. Now the thing is, a lot of people have um, some, you know, complications and things like that. It all depends on your health issues and circumstances, your surgeon, different things like that. Um, for me, I haven't had no issues to date. I feel like I'm one of the most luckiest people on the planet because I haven't had any issues at all. Um, I went into surgery, I prayed before I went into surgery. And even though my surgeon wasn't one of the doctors that has been doing this for years, I still went with her. Um, so I prayed about it and I put all my faith in God and he brought me out on top and I'm doing pretty good, I think. Um, so yes, I will do the procedure again. As for, is it worth it? Yes. The thing you have to look at is, don't worry about your first week or two of how you feel after surgery because you're going to feel some type of way. The first week or two, you're going to be like, what the hell did I do to myself? I'm going to be honest because I was like, what in the world? I could barely eat. I could barely keep anything, you know, that was solid down um, without any issues. So for me, I didn't throw it up, but it would come up in my chest a little bit, in my throat, and then it would go down. Um, and the very first day I thought I had lost my everlasting mind after surgery when I threw up. Now, mind you, when I threw up, that was the first and the only time I've thrown up since having the surgery. And that was while I was in the hospital. And I threw up this stuff that looked bloody and black. So that was... Um, gross scared the daylights out of me and i was like what the hell did i just do to myself so yes you're going to go through that in your mind and you're going to feel like did i just like kill myself did i just like intentionally you know put myself through some pain that i don't have to go through but when you look at the 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 flip side and you see that you don't have to take pills no more you can walk better you can climb steps better um, your doctors are saying you're looking good, you're feeling great, your family, your friends, everything starts to come together um, and you forget about not being able to eat. And one thing you have to realize is the world overeats. So you having a tiny tummy is just basically putting you back into perspective. If that helps you out a little bit better. Um, because at the end of the day, we eat a lot in here in America and it's not um, proportioned correctly. 
and the diet that they teach us while we're going through gastro bypass or um, the vertical sleeve is in moderation and that's actually how we are supposed to eat on a daily basis anyway so the next question was um well the pro the pros are your health is better you feel better um you see the progress you get way further than you would if you didn't have the surgery in a lot quicker um you begin to you start to fall in love with yourself again the cons a lot of foods you won't be able to eat two certain things the smell of them don't sit well with you um you could have dumping syndrome you could have other health issues but pray about it ask god to give you the strength to get through it and hopefully you won't be one of the ones that um have to deal with that situation also she asks how much money will she be spending on vitamins food shakes and groceries basically about the same amount that you spend now on your groceries um protein for a case of protein shakes if you go to costco or somewhere like that's going to run you around between 20 and 25 dollars and that also depends on what state you are in um and that's just for one flavor so if you're like me and you like multiple flavors you're going to get multiple cases or you're going to go other places where you can get the shakes like um different grocery stores or CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, um, Target, Walmart, all these places have things that you need. If you want to keep it on the cheaper end, I say go to Walmart because they're a lot cheaper than most places and you can get more bang for your buck. Um, but as far as vitamins, you only have to buy vitamins, but let me see let's just put it like this look for a sale look for a deal and buy your um vitamins um two months out so that means you have at least a two month supply so that's not something you have to get all the time and make sure you have enough capsules to take you through um the month um what else i was going to say also at the beginning do your best to try the pills out first, especially if you're gonna be taking calcium. You wanna make sure you try different pills out first to see how your tummy agrees with the vitamins because not every vitamin agrees with everyone. So you have to see and test things out. Also refer back to my video on vitamins um, because I talk about how some of the vitamins make me feel, which ones I like, which ones what I didn't, and why I did not like them. So refer back to that video, check that video out as well. Um, if you have any questions on vitamins, vitamins can become expensive. So that's why I said look for a bargain, look for a deal um, because it can become pricey and you want everything to be cost effective. You don't want your, um, your new life to become more expensive than your previous um, way of living before you had weight loss surgery um but in my eyes you actually save some money because you can't eat as much you do have to have vitamins you do have to have shakes and things like that but in my eyes you're saving money because even if you eat out you can share food with other people um because you, your pouch is only four to six ounces so you're gonna save a boatload of money just get an appetizer and eat on the appetizer or you know when your family order food Ask everybody if you can have a bite of their food and you contribute to their bill. That's another way you can save um, for you and your husband or whoever you might be out with. Um, what else is she? Let me see what the next one is. Um, all right, she's from Greece. So we're going to talk about stalls. I know everybody wants to know about stalls. Okay, so let me just be blunt and straight up with you guys about stalls. Stalls are the devil, okay? Stalls are definitely the devil. When you're going through a stall, it puts you in a mindset as you're not succeeding. You're not doing something correctly. Um, 
or that you have messed up or hindered your sleeve. Um, and that might not even be the cause, you know what I mean? Now, stalls are needed. You have to go through a stall every so often. Um, nine times out of ten, you're going to hit a stall, if not every month, every other month, or however. It depends on everybody's body and how their body adjusts and how quickly their body adjusts. Um, I know for me, you guys, I hit a stall, I want to say my third to fourth week out of surgery, I hit a stall. And I was on a stall for six weeks. The scale was not going nowhere. Now, I could feel, you know, that my wings and everything was feeling looser and everything. But the scale wasn't budging. And I was like, did I hurt my sleeve? Why am I not losing weight? People talking about they 50, 50 and 60 pounds down in, in two and three months. And I'm like, yo, I'm the scale not even moving for me. What do I do? How can I break this stall? At the end of the day, you can try and break the stall, but guess what's going to happen? Your weight going to go right back up to where it needs to be until your, bo your body catches up with it. So at the end of the day, your body has to catch up with what you just put your body through. When you go through weight loss surgery, your body's like, what is going on? It's almost like mucinex. Your body's trying to fight um, trying to fight against the mucus or whatever. And it's trying to figure out what's going on. So at the beginning, you're losing weight, you're losing weight, you're losing weight, you're losing weight. Which is basically getting rid of the mucus, getting rid of the bacteria, whatever you want, analogy you want to use. And then it hits a stall. Because it's now like, okay, what do we do now? It's recalibrating, okay? So now it's trying to figure out what should I do with this body that I'm in now? I have a new stomach that doesn't fit the size person that I'm inside of. So it's recalibrating and trying to figure out how to take care of you. Um, once that happens, you start to lose weight again. Okay. Once my stall broke, like you guys, let me be honest. While I was going through my stalls, I got depressed. I got down. I was like, what the hell did I do? This ain't going to be successful. Dang, I'm going to have to get re, re um, sleeved and this, that, and that. So many thoughts go through your mind. You feel like it wasn't worth it. Everything goes through your mind during this time. You need to be around the most supportive people you could possibly be around. And understand that everybody goes through stalls. You're not alone. It's mandatory because your brain and your body says so. Okay, um, now some stalls can happen because of the way we're eating, and that's further out. Um, so you might want to change how much you're eating. Now, for me, they want me to be between um, 600 to 800 calories. Sometimes I go up to a thousand calories, and it's because I'm at work and I'm standing all day. And sometimes I just feel lightheaded, dizzy, or what have you. I don't have the you know the privilege of sitting down all day i'm standing between five to eight hours a day um and as you can see i'm so used to standing now i love standing doing my videos um but just understand that stalls have to happen to help you be successful in your journey and not hinder your weight loss okay because sometimes if you lose too fast you can become sick and then when you hit a stall, just say, thank you, God. That's God's way of saying, okay, I'm fixing your body. And we recalibrating. We're going to figure out how we can get you to this next goal that you have that you want to accomplish. So that you can reach your long-term goals. Okay? Um, let me see. Not losing enough weight. We all feel that way. Most of the time, we all feel like we're not losing enough weight. Because when you look at other people's journey, you're like, okay, what am I doing wrong? This girl is slaying, honey. She is losing weight like this. You just, every time you look, she's skinnier. But you like this. Boom. You just stalled again. At the end of the day, everybody loses weight at a different pace. 
Um, one of the other things is, depending on how big you are, is how rapidly you will lose weight. So basically, the bigger you are, the quicker you will lose weight at the beginning of getting your sleeve or your gastro bypass, okay? And typically, gastro bypass patients lose weight quicker anyway. But the sleeve is a little bit more gradual, okay? Um, what else? Okay, so that's basically what everybody wanted to know was about food grocery stores, um, and different things like that. So let me just add this to the mix. At the end of the day, I prayed myself out of my sleeve because I started to eat things that I shouldn't have been eating because I got down and I was like, oh my God, this is emotional eating and this is like not cool. And like, what am I supposed to do? So I got down and I had to pray myself out of that thing because the last thing I wanted was to go in and have this amazing surgery to better my life and still come out and be fat. Because people want you to fail. But I don't want you to fail. I want you to be great and live abundantly, you know. I feel as though God put us here. He gave us the nutrients and gave us the wisdom to be able to be successful in anything we put our mind to. So it's all about your mindset. If you tell your mind, hey, I'm going to lose weight. If you want me to or not, I'm going to do it. Guess what? Your body has no other choice but to follow what you program into your mind. You have to say, I'm going to be successful. Like my goal is to be 160. I told myself, you're going to be 160, girl, if you like it or not. Why? Because you're going to be able to chase your nieces and nephews around. You're going to be able to fly without a seatbelt extension. You're going to be able to hopefully one day be able to have a baby and be able to hold the baby and not miscarry. You're going to be able to do everything that you ever wanted to do in life. And just travel and love it. Anything that held you back for being, from being overweight, you will be able to do. Unless you have issue, other issues that's causing you not to be able to. But just look at it as, here I have a chance at having a new life and to live it abundantly. We are wonderfully and beautifully made in God's image, you guys. So embrace your journey. Understand that your journey is your journey. 